What's going on? Let's talk about the Astros some more, right? We got some news yesterday. We got a Hinge press conference. We got a Wall Street Journal article we added to the story. It's been about a long time since I did the second part of the first part of the Astros update and everything that's going on. If you're like, oh, stop talking about this. No one cares anymore. Don't watch the video. It's it's a you thing. It's interesting. It's the biggest scandal in sports. It's the biggest baseball story going right now. I cover baseball. Here we go. So, the commissioner made his report, and in his report, he said, yes, the Astros are cheaters. In 2016 or 17, they started, let me backtrack a little, because I'm going to put a little bit of my opinion in here. The easiest thing for the commissioner and MLB to do from their investigation was to be was to come out and say, yes, they did the banging in 2017, because they couldn't deny that, because the evidence was, you couldn't dispute it. So, yes, they did the banging in 2017, but they we have no proof that they did it any further, and we have no proof of any other method of getting the sign to the batter than the banging. Easiest report they could have done. I said that on any podcast I was on. I was like, this is what I expect them to do. And it's what they did. And even worse than that, in the report that Manfred put out, he just – pinned it, him or the Astros or whoever, just pinned it on everyone that's not there. There's literally a section section on Cora, not with the team anymore. Beltron, not with the team anymore. Taubman, not with the team anymore. So not only were like, yeah, it only happened this one time, which you guys already know because the evidence is so obvious, but also the guys that did it, they're not even with the Astros anymore. He also made it, all right, let's get into it. So this is the part I like. Approximately two months into the 2017 season, a group of Players, including Carlos Beltran, discussed that the team could improve on decoding opposing team signs and communicating the signs to the batter. Cora arranged for a video room technician to install a monitor displaying the center field camera feed immediately outside the Astros dugout. So earlier in it, they say that they were using, they were decoding the sequences when the catcher would put them down, and when they had a runner on second, they would give them the the code, the the sign, and he would give it to the batter. A lot of baseball teams do that. Almost all of them, it's kind of the name of the game. So then that paragraph says, once they had the system in place, they're like, screw this, let's make it easier. The replay room is so far away, if we can see the monitor, then we don't have to relay the signal through all these people and get it to a batter on second. We can just bang on the trash can, and they can hear it right there. So they hooked up a monitor to the wall, right? It was on the wall, And then several players uh, told my investigators that there was a sense of panic in the Astros' dugout after White Sox pitcher Danny Farquhar appeared to notice the trash can bangs. Before the game ended, a group of Astros players removed the monitor from the wall in the tunnel and hid it in an office. So that video that outed them at the very beginning, the Farquhar one, as he's like, hey, catch, catch, come here, they're running down, ripping it off the wall, hiding it. But they did replace it with a portable monitor that was set up on a table, and they used that during the playoffs. And that's the one that we have the picture of that we have. I think that, I don't know what this guy's name is, Matt Supton, uh, in the scouting department, removing the picture after game three of the World Series, which they're coming back tomorrow to play another game in the World Series in Houston. Why would you take down an entire setup just to put it right back up the next game? Probably because it's fishy and illegal. So that was pretty obvious, but a lot of Houston fans denied that, and they were like, no way. And it's like, well, okay, what now? Because it's true. It's very true. This is my favorite part of the commissioner's statement because it makes zero sense, and I think the whole entire commissioner's statement is kind of like a joke. He says, Hinch neither devised the banging scheme nor participated in it. Cool. Good job, Hinch. Hinch told my investigators that he did not support his players decoding signs using the monitor installed near the dugout and banging the trash can. And he believed that the conduct was both wrong and distracting. Go, Hinch. What a good guy. Moral, morally right. He didn't like it. Goes on to say, Hinch attempted to signal his disapproval of the scheme by physically damaging the monitor on two occasions, necessi- necessita- necessitating its replacement. So Hinch, he told the team, he beat up the monitors to let them know that he disapproved. That's what it says right there. Hinch attempted to signal his his disapproval. The very next sentence, however, 
Hinch admits he did not stop it, and he did not notify players or Cora that he disapproved of it. Well, which one is it? Did he not notify players that he disapproved of it, or did he beat up monitors with a baseball bat as a sign of disapproval? You just did two sentences in a row, and they they don't go together. Um, and then later on in this one paragraph, he says, um, similarly, he knew of it, he knew of and did not stop the communication of sign information from the replay r- review room, although he disagreed with this practice as well and specifically voiced his concerns on at least one occasion and the use of the replay phone for its purpose. So now he's. He's, he's very against the replay room. They're saying that he, he voiced his concern on at least one occasion to not use the replay phone to signal things, but he never voiced his concern about banging a trash can because one seemed worse than the other, and you're telling me that he was whatever. You guys get it. It doesn't make sense. That whole paragraph is stupid. What their goal was was to not destroy the Astros' entire reputation. They, got, they, they suspended... Hinch and Lunau, the manager and the GM, and then they let the Astros fire them so the Astros and Astros owner can save face and be like, we didn't know this was going on, and that's not allowed. So from there, as you guys know, Lunau's fired, Hinch is fired, uh, Cora, he gets fired from the Red Sox because they basically outed him as like the main dude involved in all of this, and Beltron gets fired there. That's the fallout. What's next in this whole entire story? Uh, oh, is next? Oh, I know what's next. I know what's next? Bregman just being a jerk face and going Marshawn Lynch on us and not saying anything to the media. You regret anything that happened in 2017? Um, you know, the commissioner, the commissioner came out with a report. MLB did their report, and um, the Astros did what they did, um, meaning they made their decision on what they're going to do, and. Um, I have no other thoughts on it. Yeah. Alex, how do you feel about the bill of those who want to say this, this tanks or damages what you guys did in 2017? Like I said, the commissioner made his report, um, made his decision. The Astros made their decision, and um, no further comment on it. Alex, is it difficult? Was the report accurate? Um, the commissioner made his report, and um, the Astros made their decision as well. And, do you have any plan to address this? Um, the commissioner made his report. And, uh... No Astros players showed remorse or apology. We had some. Keuchel said, like, yeah, we shouldn't have done it. Charlie Morton just came out and said, so the pitchers. The pitchers are like, yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> None of the hitters are saying anything. Altuve tried to spin it into, like, they're the underdog story, which sucks. And then last night we had Jared Diamond's report from the Wall Street Journal, which pretty much countered the – the statement from Manfred. So the Wall Street Journal reports that this was called Code Breaker. The Astros called it Code Breaker and the Dark Arts because they're a bunch of fucking nerdy finance losers that think they're in some secret cult like Skull and Bones and they're not actually. You're just a bunch of nerds. Stop naming things so stupidly. Anyway, Code Breaker was an Excel program. I talked about this on some appearances I've done. A lot of teams use this algorithm. You punch in the sequence and then the result, sequence, result, sequence, result. Algorithm shows you the pattern, finds it for you, and they use that. Started using that in 2016, which I think a lot of teams start using, but then they took it to the next level and the next level and all of that. But what this Wall Street Journal article from Jared Diamond tells us is that the existence of Code Breaker shows that it was the Astros front office that laid the groundwork for the team's electronic science stealing schemes, not just Cora and Beltron, who was easy to blame because they weren't there anymore. And, you know, they said Lunau said he had no idea, and that says he pretty much did. And it also confirms that they started around June 2017, and the system was embellished by Astros. They started watching a live game on a monitor near the dugout and then would bang on the trash can to communicate. We all know this. We all know this. This report says they used it in the World Series against the Dodgers, obviously. And then it says that they not only used it at home, but on the road. So if they're using Code Breaker on the road, they would bring their replay department with them, and maybe we just don't know how they're transferring the sign to the batter. If they're not banging a trash can, how are they transferring the sign to the batter when there's not a runner on second, but you know the sequences. This is where the biggest theory comes in that's coming up, and it's all about the buzzers, right? You probably heard about this, that they were wearing electric buzzers somewhere, shoes, arms, 
taped to the bat that would just vibrate and and uh, give you the signal. And you can find them online. There's like Bluetooth, little buzzer type shit. Anyway, the first reported, the first time these were reported was in Joel Sherman's article uh, very early on why Rob Manfred should make a harsh example of illegal sign stealing. And in that article, little on, Joel Sherman said, in recent days, I have had scouts and executives talk to me about a variety of methods they think have been or could be employed, such as a realistic looking electronic bandage placed on a player's body that buzzes in real time to signal what is coming. One buzz for a fastball, for example, and a blah, blah, blah. So Joel Sherman's the first one to go on record and not say that this is happening, but this is a rumor that people are talking about. Um, and then there's this really weird Reddit thread, and take this for what it is. During the World Series, there's this guy who commented, I had a dream a couple of weeks a couple of weeks back when the Astros were playing the Rays. It was uh, after the postseason finish, a news story came out that the Astros had a team of people deciphering signs with cameras, and then that team relayed the signal to trans- transponders that were worn in the cleats of the top, trusted not to snitch, Astros players. The transponders would vibrate according to what pitch was coming. So, I mean, that could be a random guy fucking around, but he kind of predicted the future that we are talking about this. This is good. His dream kind of reality. I talked to some people that say they can go through that dude's uh, Reddit page and see his niche likes, and they can figure out who it is. But it's just another little tale that is this fascinating story. Who knows what's true and what's not true. I heard the rumors, like I didn't hear that, you know, I have proof, or I don't think anyone's going to hear that, but I heard like, yeah, that's rumored to be true. Trevor Bauer said he's heard it from a lot of people as well. He's got an axe to grind. Then came the fun video where we're like, wait, why didn't Altuve want his jersey ripped off after he hit the walk-off home run and they're all celebrating? It's very odd the way he says, no, 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 not my shirt. I think he said something in Spanish like, oh, whatever shirt is, and then no. Very odd. He celebrates on the field with the team, but before he changes out of his jersey into the ALCS champions T-shirt, he runs into the clubhouse and then comes back on the field in the shirt. Very weird move. So weird. So weird that Ken Rosenthal made it his first question in the post-game conference. Dude hits a walk-off home run to send his team to the World Series and production, and Ken Rosenthal, who is the guy who broke this story and was working on it for months before they broke it, goes, hey, why didn't you want your teammates to rip your shirt off? That's pretty suspect, he said inside his own head, but didn't say. And then uh, Altuve came up with his answer, which was this. We asked the teammates not to tear your shirt. Why? What's that? Did you ask your teammates not to tear your shirt? Why was that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm too shy. Last time they did that, I got in trouble with my wife. <laughs> and I'm just going to let my good friend Chaz Palmateri break this one down for you. Tell him what it is, Chaz. All right. Any professional will tell you the way to spot a liar is a liar does three things when you ask them a question. One, they ask you to repeat it because they need more time to think of the lie to answer you. Not to tear your shirt. Why? What's that? Did you ask- the second thing is they laugh to fluff it off like it's not really an important question. Why was that? <laughs> I don't know. And the third thing is what they do is they come up with more than one answer. I'm too shy. Oh, I'm shy. Oh, no, it's not I'm shy. My wife doesn't want me to do it. I rest my case. Case closed. How you like that, huh? Hey, Astros. Now you just can't leave. So, (laughs) um, went to Chaz's restaurant in New York the other day. Met him. Nice guy. Said hi. He said, I fucking hate the Astros. (laughs) Uh, After that, you had a bunch of players chime out. Clevenger on the Indians, rather upset. I don't think any of those motherfuckers should be able to look us in the eye. They, just, they should feel ashamed. You want to protect the guy next to you, you want to protect the sanctity of baseball? It's not giving $5 million you know, discipline to a billion dollar corporation. And while they're still walking around with the same ring on their finger in the same uniform, the same city, and the same contract. And we also had a bunch of players actually chime in. You know, Marcus Stroman was shown that they used the banging on him, and he said, shit makes sense now. I remember wondering how these guys were laying off some of my nasty pitches, relaying all my signs in live speed to the batter, ruining the integrity of the game. These dudes were all about the camera and social media. 
Now they all quiet. Chris Archer chimed in and said, totally silent, silent. Where's that swag now? It was all a facade the whole time. The act, the game, all of it. Sean Doolittle spoke out. A lot of players have spoke out and kind of in the same thing. Like, this is sucks. And that brings us to the interview that Hinch did on MLB TV that they dropped on a Friday night because they're just trying to save face and I help Hinch out. I don't know what the point of this interview was. Was I don't know why Hinch agreed to do it. I don't know why MLB TV did it. It's just a pluff piece. It's just absolutely nothing. Take a listen to this question. We've heard reports about Astros players wearing buzzers underneath their uniforms. That's how they're getting the signal, what pitch is coming. I know the commissioner's office looked into this, and they determined there was nothing to it. Can you assure us there were no buzzers or anything like that being well, pretty easy, right? Hey, did you guys use buzzing bandages? Are those allegations true? If the answer's no, it's so easy to be like, absolutely not. We did get caught for banging the trash can. We'll face the punishment for that. People will have their own decisions and thoughts on that. We did not use buzzing bandages. Wouldn't you want to get out ahead of that and just be like, you know what? This one, I can say no to because it didn't happen. So I'm going to make sure my answer is no. This is what he says. We got investigated for three months and the commissioner's office did as thorough an investigation as anyone could imagine was possible. I mean, I know he mentioned the the emails and the texts and the messages. Um, And I believe them. Um, What? The commissioner made his report, and I believe it. So what Bregman said, the commissioner made his report. The commissioner's report is the lightest possible findings that they could have found, in my opinion, and it's helping them, and it allows them to say that shit. Well, the commissioner's report didn't find anything. If you could say no, you would have said no, in my opinion. That's the video. I don't know how long this was. It says 18 minutes. This is 18 minutes. That's fucking long. Sorry, guys.